Hi, my name is Joshua Murphy, and I want to thank you for coming to this presentation put on by the Greater Japan Fest, the what would have been the Greater Japan Festival. Uh, we're sorry that we couldn't do an in-person presentation, but we're hoping this will be just as good, and it will help prepare you for next year's actual festival once the COVID-19 problem is resolved. But I'm Joshua Murphy. I'm a Japanese game show historian. Uh, if you're wondering how someone from Kansas becomes a Japanese game show historian, it's through a lot of poor life choices. Um, but today I'm gonna be teaching you about the NHK panel shows from the 1940s and 1950s and 1960s. We're gonna be focusing on the panel shows that were based on American formats that were eventually licensed to NHK for their own productions. Uh, we're gonna go over a key point, a couple key points in this presentation. If we could go to the next slide. Uh, in order to do this, we need to first discuss what exactly a panel show is. We're going to be talking about the NHK Broadcasting Network. We're going to be talking about all of the shows that they produced in the 50s and 60s that were based on American formats. We're also going to be talking about those American formats at the same time. And we're going to be talking about the subsequent availability of these shows or formats to audiences in a 2020 world who wish to view them. So if we can go to the next slide, we can see we first need to find out what exactly is a panel show. Well, a panel show. Uh, formatted could be either in radio or television, but generally involves a panel of either celebrities, authors, writers, directors, presenters, uh, working together or working parallel to each other to achieve some sort of goal on a show format. This can be against some sort of competitor or challenger, or can be against an idea in favor of a challenger or performer. Oftentimes these affairs are seen as sort of a higher class, at least when they were first made, they were sort of seen as a higher class and are often erudite and intellectual. Oftentimes any prizes or any sort of uh, value or money was often minimal at best, which actually helped uh, make the shows more enjoyable to the viewers because it helped remove stakes. So now that we know about, by the way, this uh, photo that you're seeing right now, this is from the longest running panel show in North American history. This is from Front Page Challenge which aired on the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation Network, uh, from 1957 to 1995. And is often viewed as one of the greatest television shows to come out of Canada. But in order to go further understand the intellectualness of these types of shows, we need to go to a network that came out in 1924. If we can go to the next slide, we will learn about the NHK Broadcasting Network. Their trademark catchphrase is honest and serious, referring to their programming, which was often honest and serious. Uh, they were formed in 1920, or they actually formed a little earlier before them, but they went live in 1924 on radio. Prior to the advent of television and prior to World War II, mostly the network focused on news and news subjects. Uh, once World War II started, the network switched to a uh, Imperial Japanese Army announcements and things of that nature. But after World War II we, is when we start to get in the first entertainment programs produced by NHK. And NHK helps produce the first show, which is called if we go to the next slide, Hanashi no Izumi, which means Spring of Information or Fountain of Information, which premiered in 1946 on NHK. It was a radio format which was hosted by, I had a number of hosts, but the most prominent host was Wada Nobutaka, who hosted, was the second host to host it, who actually uh, passed away during the making of the show while visiting Finland. But uh, the show featured prominent celebrities, uh, writer Hochiro Sata, uh, voiceover artist and uh, radio broadcaster Yume Tokugawa, uh, director Kojiro Yamamoto, who would later go on to make films for the Toho Corporation, and uh, Moto Otogawa, who was a uh, critic at the time, uh, trying to answer viewer proposed questions. Uh, these questions may or may not have an actual relevant answer, but uh, the goal was not just to provide information, but also to entertain audience in humorous ways. Uh, 1,300 submissions would be sent in every week from various people all across Japan. And the uh, prize for getting your submission chosen or your question chosen was 30 yen, which is the American equivalent of about 19 cents. Uh, today's market, it would be about 40 cents. And the prize for stumping the panelists, which was a rare occurrence, was 50 yen which is the equivalent of 38 American cents, which today would be about uh, 78, 76 cents American. So this was the first show, and it was actually based on an American format called Information Please, which aired on NBC. And another format that will also come into effect, which was licensed 
from another format is, if we can go to the next slide, is called Niju no Tobira, which is 20 doors. And to put it simply, Niju no Tobira was a 20 questions game show where viewers would submit subjects, names, nouns, proper names, actions, sayings, etc. And a panel of celebrities would have to try to figure out what that item was by asking no more than 20 yes or no questions. Uh, this radio format aired on NHK in 1947 to 1960. It was it was moderated by Shuichi Fujikura uh, and became a prominent example of what could be done from a Japanese game show lasting for a long time in radio. Uh, as I said, it was based on an American format. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll see that it was called, appropriately enough, 20 Questions, the question answer show everyone enjoys. Uh, premiered on Mutual Radio, um, and it was actually the television version premiered in 1946. This photo you're seeing right now is not a radio press photo, that's from the television version although it originally premiered in radio. It was moderated by uh, Fred Van Deventer, and it was identical to the Japanese format, only instead of a celebrity panel, it was primarily consisted of members of the immediate family of the production staff, or Fred Van Deventer. Uh, this format proved well, as in 1950, we get one of the most successful American television game shows of all time, produced by Goodson Todman. On the next slide, we'll see What's My Line? What's My Line was a popular panel show aired out of New York from 1950 to 1967, Sunday nights on CBS. Uh, proving to be one of the most successful formats around the world, it was licensed to French Canada, French-speaking Canada, Russia, various countries around the world. So it only makes sense that in 1953, on its premier week of broadcasting, NHK would eventually show, on the next slide, What Is My Job or Watashi no Shigoto wa uh, this was generally considered to be the first ever television game show to be aired in Japan. It premiered on February 5th, 1953. It shared the exact same format as the American version of What's My Line and consisted of occupation guessing. A panel of experts would ask yes or no questions to try to identify a, guess, a challenger's occupation. Uh, while the format proved successful in America, unfortunately it was not a huge success in Japan, only airing for a little over a year and a half. Um, the next show that does air on NHK 15 days later, which does prove to be a huge success, and is often what most people and what most Japanese television viewers think of when they think of the first successful game show, is Gesture, or Jessucha, which aired on NHK from 1953 to 1968. Uh, there were over six moderators, however, the most prominent moderator, the third moderator, was Hiroshi Ogawa, and it was more or less a charades game show, which featured a team of men and a team of women. Uh, the male team was led by Higuro uh, Yanagiya, who would lead the uh, white-wearing male team, and the female team was led by uh, Takiko Mizue, who would be on the red team. And if we can get a click, we'll see the kind of phrases that would have to be uh, communicated through only physical gestures, charades, etc. No words, no sounds. So you can see the length of the phrase would often be a difficult thing to uh, interject or interplay to a contestant. But this proved to be a very popular format as it was action or somewhat moderately action oriented and helped pave the way for future shows in Japan. And what's not known is that this format was actually based on an American format which aired slightly before there uh, called pantomime quiz, and if we can go to the next slide, we'll see the comparison slide of uh, Mike Stokey's pantomime quiz, which would later be called pantomime quiz, which would later be called Shoot, Stump the Stars, and we can see the visual similarities between pantomime quiz and gesture. Uh, this gesture photo is actually a press photo from NHK and not a screen cap from the show. This episode of this pantomime quiz clip is also a press photo. Going forward from gesture, we go to a number of different shows and different licensing formats. For example, we get, on the next slide, we get the Japanese version of the popular game show To Tell the Truth, premiering in 1959, Watashi no, uh, Sore wa Watashi Desu, which featured a, four celebrity panels asking and challenging a group of three, all claiming to be the same central character. Two of them were lying, one of them was the actual character in question, uh, but only the central character of the truth, the actual person was able to tell the truth and answer the questions honestly. The other two were allowed to either tell the truth or lie. Uh, at the end of the questioning period, all of the celebrities would individually vote without 
uh, without panel discussion of any kind on who they thought the real central figure was. The next format we see coming out of America to Japan is a show format called F, uh, Shapu-san Furato-san, or uh, Sharp and Flat, which was actually based not on a Mark Goodson Todman show, but actually based on a short-lived NBC show called Music Bingo, wherein celebrity contestants would have to identify pieces of music, and if they were able to correctly identify a piece of music, ringing in sort of in a name that tune fashion, they would be able to place either a sharp or a flat, depending on whichever one represented them, on the music bingo board. Object was to get five in a row. The NBC version of this show was hosted by Johnny Gilbert, uh, who is, as of us recording this presentation now, still the announcer on Jeopardy in the year 2020, and he sounds exactly the same. Um, this is actually a rare occasion where the Japanese show far supersedes the successes of the American show. The American show only lasted for two years, whereas the Japanese show managed to last for eight years. Uh, the next show, which also proves to be popular, gaining a 43% market rate at its highest throughout the country, is called Watashi no Himitsu, or It's My Secret, which was a remake of an American show called I've Got a Secret, which was a sort of takeoff of What's My Line. And whereas the Japanese version of What's My Line fails to garner any successes in the country, It's My Secret manages to become a huge success, airing for almost 10 years in the country. But going from that, we get probably the longest running show, lasting for 20 years, which was based on an American format called Password, which featured a celebrity and a contestant partner trying to convey to each other a one-word answer using only a one-word clue while competing against another celebrity and their contestant partner. This format premiered on CBS in 1961 and helped inspire a 1968 format called Renzo game, or association game. Uh, this format premiered on a segment of a television show called Everyone Has a Reserved Seat, and was originally a one-time segment that ended up becoming a popular format of its own, and managed to be the longest running television game show uh, in Japan based on a panel format. Uh, it had over eight different hosts over its run. Uh, the last host was Akira Tokuda, who hosted it from 1989 to 1991. And what's interesting about that is he would have been in high school when the show originally premiered. Uh, the photo on top is actually from a fan recording of one of the original episodes of Everyone Has a Reserved Seat. The bottom photo is from uh, an episode of Renzo Game that aired probably sometime in the mid-1980s, uh, probably after 1984 or around 1984. Why does the year 1984 come into effect? Well. Uh, a lot of these television shows were done live at the time. Uh, live television obviously has a sense of sake, a sense of a little bit of danger because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't have the ability to say, cut, let's do that again. Uh, kind of like I'd like to do with this presentation. But um, So a lot of these shows, while recorded via a process called kinescope, uh, which was a, a process wherein a camera was pointed at a television monitor to capture the feed uh, in order to preserve it, that process was not commonly used in Japan the way it was in America. Uh, conversely, a lot of these shows were recorded on four and a half in four inch tape, which had a tendency to either uh, be easily re recordable over or was very bulky and hard to store. So, if we go to the next slide, we can see uh, a process known as wiping or junking. Now, wiping is the process of, as dictionary.com defines it, to remove or eliminate something completely. Uh, and as with many of these shows, almost all of them, despite airing for hundreds of hours over the course of many decades, almost all of them are gone. And if we get a quick click, we can see pretty much the entire library that still exists today of NHK's Japanese game shows. Uh, NHK released a set of videos in 1995, which they later re-released in 2003 on DVD. Uh, this, what you're seeing right now is five of those video sets. Uh, two of these are game shows. One is uh, uh, Watashi no Himitsu, It's My Secret, and the other is a uh, Gesture. The other three are dramas. Um, this pretty much constitutes the, the entire library of Japanese television that still exists to this day from that era. Uh, NHK did not stop the wiping process until 1984. So while a lot of episodes of Renzo Game in color still exist, pretty much every episode that was shot in black and white has gone forever. Uh, there are believed to be no episodes of sharp or flat left in existence. Uh, any record of the Japanese version of What's My Line 
Watashi no Shigoto wa Nandesho is completely gone. Uh, very scant references of it still exist. However, if we go forward, we can still see the impact that the panel show has on the Japanese market today. Even though we live in a COVID world where getting a group of people is harder to gather, hard to do more now than ever, we still see that the panel format still lasts in Japan. And while it may not be in vogue in the United States anymore, the format continues to be seen on a variety of shows. Um, in the 80s, we had Seikai Marugoto, how much? Around the world, how much is it? We had, um, what else? We had um, Turibia no Izumi, Fountain of Trivia, Hey Spring of Trivia. And those are just a couple of the thousands of panel shows that have come out of Japan since the medium was first introduced. Um, and that is the, pretty much the history of the NHK panel shows. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, a few legal things we need to say. Um, special thanks to, uh, oh, actually, if you want, have any questions about NHK panel shows, American panel shows, Japanese game shows, or American game shows, feel free to email me at jmmurphy09 at yahoo.com. Uh, conversely, if you have any episodes of any Japanese television shows, that were recorded before 1984. Also, please get in contact with either myself or the fine people who have been putting on this uh, presentation. Um, uh, Niju, Niju no uh, Tobira Watashi no Shigata wa Nande Sho. Gesture, Sore wa Watashi Desu. Sharpu san Furato san. Watashi no Himitsu. Renzo game are all property of the NHK Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, what's my line to tell the truth? I've got a secret and password or the copyright of the Goodson Todman Productions property, Fremantle, North America. Uh, special thanks to Josh Wu and Justin Odom for translating helps. And uh, thank you to Adam Neda for your incredible knowledge of American television. And uh, thank you to the Greater Japan Festival for letting me do this presentation. And remember, it's hard to see the end when you're beginning. <laughs>